Greece, 500 years before the birth of Christ. The Persian Empire dominates the ancient world, and only one nation stands in its way, the democracy of Athens. Now, 11,000 Athenian citizens must defend their culture, their homeland, and their freedom against the army of Darius, king of kings. Leading the Greeks are a team of amateur sailors comprising two generals. Keep out to the right, they're just running off on their own. And their lieutenants. We're getting pinged up with the skirmishes. They must hold off the Persian advance and impress two military experts. That force will be wiped out. Will the Persians crush the flower of Western culture? Or will the Greek heroes triumph on the day? Oh, Jesus. This is Time Commanders. Joining Eddie Mayer inside our 21st century war room are a team of friends from Ipswich Sailing Club. Andrew James, 42, Helmsman, rank general. Dave Chisholm, 36, Helmsman, rank general. Kerry Ryan, 22, navigator, rank lieutenant. Scott Dawson, 24, trimmer, rank lieutenant. Andrew, you're a helmsman normally. You're normally in charge, right? Yeah, do quite a bit of helm. So what does that involve? Do you all go on the same boat together? We have all sailed on the same boat together. We've also sailed against each other quite a bit. And I'm told that you in particular are very competitive. Well, I, that's, it wasn't me that said that. <laughs> no, it was, it was Dave. We're coming on to him. Uh, you, we all are a little bit. Dave, you say Drew is dangerous when cornered. <laughs> Just clearly from experience. Yeah, absolutely. Suddenly when you're sort of racing against him and you think he's dead and buried, he just comes back and makes you pay. You don't trust him then? Oh, not as far as I can throw. It's great you two are going to be generals working together in battle. That's going to all go well. Kerry, uh, you know Dave extremely well, don't you? Yeah, I've been going out with Dave for the last couple of years. So I managed to put him in his place and shout back when he gives me, gives me a stick. And you can take orders? If I agree with them. <laughs> All right, Scott, uh, you've raced everything from 60-foot yachts to dinghies. What's yep. the hardest thing to do? Adapt to which one you're trying to, trying to do. There's a big difference and you've just got to adapt to, to what's going on around you and fit in with the team. And right now, do you wish you were all at sea? Um, we'd feel a lot happier, I think. <laughs> Give it 20 minutes, you will be. Um, all right, all the time we've been chatting. Down here are two historical experts, Alec and Soul, have been uh, completing their authentication of the battle. Gentlemen, do you want to come up here and uh, give us the most basic information first? Dr. Eric Nussbacher, Senior Lecturer in War Studies, Sandhurst. Dr. Saul David, Military Historian and Author. All right, the Battle of Marathon, you're the Athenians versus the Persians. And it's 490 years before the Christian era. There is one superpower in the world, and it's not you. It's the Persians. 50 years ago, they destroyed Babylon, and 35 years ago, they overthrew the pharaohs. And uh, now they're coming for the Greeks. The veteran Greek general Miltiades commands a citizen army from the democratic city-state of Athens. They're fighting to defend their lives, their freedom, and Athenian democracy itself. But they are outnumbered two to one by the Persian war machine. You're going to be leading a few thousand Athenian farmers with a bit of rudimentary training and, and not a lot of military knowledge or understanding against the mightiest army in the known world, Darius, King of Kings. And if you lose, he'll kill everybody you know. The army of Darius has destroyed another Greek city up the coast, and now they've sailed to Marathon to challenge the army of Athens. But the Persians may take hours to fully disembark from their fleet, now moored in the bay. Without time on their side, the Greeks must move hard and fast against their enemy. But before they can tackle the Persians, the team must learn as much as possible about the battle ahead. First, they get to look at the terrain. The 
Bay of Marathon is open and flat, dominated by a temple to the demigod Heracles. On one side of the plain stands the Athenian army, assembled in columns at the foot of a small hill, with the waters of the Aegean to their right. Opposite the Greeks, fresh from their journey by sea, are the troops of the Persian Empire, deployed in a very wide formation. Although they are massively outnumbered, the Greek army should benefit from the flat open terrain. The key to the team winning this battle is that they fight on the plain. They may be tempted to stay on the high ground, it's what armies often do, but their best chance of winning this is getting down onto the plain and meeting the Persians as quickly as possible. That's the plain in the middle that you've already identified there. Has this got any significance? It's totally significant, isn't it? <laughs> You're saying that on the basis of what? Well, I'm saying it on the basis that if we're looking for some form of protection, that could possibly be it. There's some sort of urban war in there, is that what you mean? I'm not sure. I haven't decided what sort of war I'm going to have yet. You, you honestly can't use the, the temple. Carol Smiley's in there having it remodelled, so okay. that's, it's, it's kind of... <laughs> Changing over. rooms and moving. Yeah. This is where the fighting's going to take place, isn't it, in the middle here? But yeah, but where do we yeah, want we, it to we be? We don't necessarily need to fight. We want to draw to us. We yeah, but where, we can move. Is she like this at home? <laughs> That's when she said we can move, we bought another house. <laughs> <laughs> I think by now we've, we've got a fair understanding yeah, of this land. <laughs> this is probably an appropriate moment to find out a bit more about your own forces. Scott and Kerry must discover one critical fact in their fight against Persian aggression. Whilst the Athenian army is 11,000 strong, it's made up solely of infantry. With no cavalry at their disposal and only a small number of skirmishers, the team must exploit the strength of their spear and shield bearing volunteer army known as the Hoplites. The Hoplites are citizen soldiers. They're the territorial army. They're aged between 20 and 50. In order to be a Hoplite in this period, you had to own enough land to have enough revenue to buy yourself this expensive, one-off sort of handmade armor. These heavily armed soldiers comprise some of the noblest citizens of Athens, among them the playwright Aeschylus and the father of the great philosopher Socrates. There are a lot of oldsters amongst those hoplites. It is not a vigorous, razor-edged army. The hoplites fight shoulder to shoulder, using their shields and spears to form an almost impenetrable formation known as the phalanx. A hoplite infantry can only do one thing, and that is move forward towards the enemy pointing a spear, that's it. They make a formidable charge at the enemy, but the phalanx can only work on flat open terrain. Will the team pick up on this critical detail? So what are you guys thinking at this stage? We know we're outnumbered, so we want to kind of lock in some space and we like this kind of hill, which I really like the idea of holding. But it's whether we hold it and absorb their pressure or whether we, how long we can hold that pressure before we knock them back. The team are transfixed with the high ground. They, they, they know that they probably should close with the Persians, but they don't want to leave the safety of the high ground. They're talking about going lower down, but will they go low enough down for the phalanx to actually be an effective, aggressive tool? We know that we're good at charging, but if we charge at them, we will be outflanked because they, there are just too many. There are so many. There are too so I many. think we need to absorb and get rid of a load of them. First. But our, our other worry with that is we're outnumbered over two to yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're thinking, you know, that there's, there aren't many of us and we don't want to go down off the hill. I mean, they're talking about going down a bit lower but not going down to the bottom. And the best way they're going to be winning this battle is by um, a bit of aggression. The team's limited infantry force is split between the two lieutenants. Kerry controls the right flank and Scott the left. We have four rows of infantry. And in the middle of that, we have a set of generals. Right. Yep. And what have you got? I have got four sets of troops. The first ones are skirmishers, and right. they're just carrying javelins. The skirmishers that the Athenians have got with them are comparatively weak, comparatively unskilled, and the Athenians don't really know how to use them yet. The next three sets are all heavily armoured yep. and are carrying huge, great long spears. But the hoplites are only effective if they maintain their tight phalanx formation. The Greek hoplites are superbly suited to fighting one kind of battle, but that's all they can do. Do we get any idea as to how far they will, you know, what their range is? Uh, they're close. 